Hi there, I'm Ray Glasser with yet another edition of the Cleveland Tech Report. Now what is the Cleveland Tech Report? Well, it's actually not a tech report, but a semi-regular feature of Carrie Decker's nightlife show going over the smooth ends of home video, something which Carrie and I both have been involved with way back since 1977 or 78 or so. Today we're going to talk about something kind of unique. It's something kind of new on the market as well. This is the Laser Vision Video Disc System. We're going to cover the video displayer itself, what different brands and models are out on the market today, as well as some that have been on the market in years gone by, and what this disc machine looks like. Now, first of all, you may be asking, what is laser vision? What is video disc? Well, as you may or may not know, there are two home video formats out right now. One is video cassette, or VCRs for video cassette recorders. The second being the VDPs, the video disc players, which we have sitting right here behind us. The video cassette recorders can record and playback off TV or off a video camera. These video disc players are only for playback. They are not recorders, just players. But the video quality that you can get out of these things is superb. Much better than any videotape that you can rent or buy in a store. This is a video disc. Now we again are using the laser system here. Kerry Deckers has already done a show about the CED system which RCA had out, which of course died quite a while ago. But this here is a laser vision video disc. This is actually made of plastic. It's quite thick and uh, you actually have two sides to each disc. Side one and side two of a movie or side three and four, whatever. Uh, these are about 12 inches big, the same size as a regular LP record, a phonograph record. Now these laser type discs, you can actually run your finger along them and feel nothing. They're smooth to the touch, okay? And they say that you can spill a drink on these things, you can run your fingernail across them, they will not hurt the disc. Why is that? There's about 54,000 grooves on one side, all the way from the inside out, that contain video information. Now on top of these grooves is a very thin layer of plastic coating, a very heavy, heavy, tough plastic coating, which prevents anything from getting inside the grooves. The grooves are read from the underside of the machine by the laser inside the machine. And by the way, the laser in here is so small, you can't take the thing out and play with it or use it inside a pistol or anything like that. It's a very low power laser beam, which actually reads the information off these discs. Now, we're going to look at this machine right here which was actually the old first Magnavox machine that came out in about 1979. And we awaited these things with bated breath because we heard about video disc players and all this stuff for years and years and we waited a long time before they were perfected enough to come out on the market and actually be sold uh, widespread. Now, when video discs first came out, they were sold on an experimental basis in Atlanta, Georgia back in, I think, the spring of 1979. And about six to 12 months later, they were actually put on the market nationwide. And uh, the main suppliers of these machines are Magnavox, Sylvania, and of course the biggie, Pioneer. Now Pioneer actually bought the, uh, the rights of this thing from MCA, who actually began the whole thing in the beginning. And they really improved on these things since they first came out. Now I have purchased at a pretty good price this first uh, Magnavox video disc player. I got this thing almost a year ago. This was a store demo from a friend of mine in Tennessee, and it still works quite, quite well. So I'm going to give you a close-up of all the controls on the machine. Then we're going to pop a disc in here and show you on TV what uh, the features are, the special effects and all that of this machine. And you can also get a general idea of how good the video quality really is. And by the way, all these things are stereo. If you have a movie that's kind of current and it has been released on tape in stereo, you can bet it'll also be out on video disc in stereo as well. Okay, here we go. We have a, we're going to have a nice little close-up of this machine in a couple seconds. This thing's pretty heavy, by the way. It's about 40 or 50 pounds. Let's go down to the corner and take a quick look see what all these controls are. Okay, here we go. On the far left, we, of course, have the power on and off button. And then we have still frame, uh, either in forward or reverse, either direction. Over here is slow motion, again in forward or reverse, either uh, direction. And here is our speed of slow motion. We can go from, I think, frame by frame, kind of like in VCRs, up to normal speed without sound. Variable speed slow motion, kind of nice. And here is regular playback. Again, we have an option of reverse or normal. Over here is fast forward. This is, I think, either three or 10 times 
uh, fast, faster than normal speed. As I said before, we do have stereo on the video disc system. We have uh, audios channel 1 and 2 with lights above them to indicate which channels are on at the same time. And by the way, you can take either channel off if you want. You can play uh, just the left or the right or both, either way. Over here is something that I kind of uh, liken to beta scan. This is a search mode, either reverse or forward. You can uh, zip through this disc real fast, either in the forward motion or in reverse motion, without any kind of beta scan type lines, and of course without sound. And lastly, we have an index counter, which puts a five digit number on the top of the screen in the left hand corner, if you want to get to a certain segment of a story, or if you want to uh, uh, look up a certain frame number of some segment that you might want to look at, or something like that. So uh, that, you can put that on the screen at the, at the touch of a button or take it off the screen as well. So we're going to go now to an on-screen demonstration on my TV set of this Magnavox video disc. Okay, here we go. The player merely opens up on the top like this with a little uh, snap mechanism over here. Open the thing up. They say you should handle a disc just like phonograph records, kind of like this. Don't uh, put your fingers on the disc itself. It doesn't hurt it, but it seems the fingerprints don't do them much good. Okay, so here we go. This is a very old disc, by the way. This is Saturday Night Fever. It was one of the first titles out, and it does have some flaws. These discs back in the old days had a lot of problems. Okay, we have changed camera angles and lighting both, so I can give you a better shot of the disc player in operation and actually concentrate on the TV picture at the same time. So here we go. We first turn the power button on, which, which is right over here on the end, and the picture goes black. The disc is now warming up. Over here, you have two lights that have come on for your audio channels, left and right channels. And now here our picture starts. This is the old DiscoVision logo. Let me give you some sound over here. This intro was actually dumped in about 1981 or so in favor of the new generic LaserVision logo. And now our movie starts. Now, by the way, this light over here is for play. Now, this came on automatically as the disc got up to speed from zero, from no speed at all, and began to play. Okay, we're now in the opening titles of the movie, and I think I'll start showing you the special effects on this machine. Now, you can't see all the controls here too well because we're in low light and all that, but I do want to show you on the TV screen what these things look like. First of all, on the far right is the index counter that I mentioned. Let's put you a number right up here on the screen, five digits, which actually counts each groove in the record. As I said, there are, I think, 54,000 grooves on one side. Okay? Now, you can put this on any time you want or take it off. This does work in all your fast forward and reverse speeds, by the way. And as you can see, this thing really moves. Now, we're going in normal speed forward. We're in the regular play mode, but this thing's really moving. Okay? Now, let's start going over the special effects. Here's your still frame, which gives you a completely beautiful, crystal clear, frozen picture. I wish beta and VHS were this good. They're not, okay? By pushing this button, you can actually move this thing ahead one frame at a time. And for proof, I've left your index counter on the screen so you can see how this works. Going one frame at a time. You can, now this is in the forward still position. You can also go in the backward or reverse still position, which sometimes has a little bit of jitter to it, as you can see there. But again, going by your numbers on the index counter, we are going in reverse slow motion. Of course, I can take this thing off, and all you're going to see is the picture here. Okay? There's your slow motion. Or actually, I'm sorry, still frame. Here is slow motion. Now, we're not moving. Why? My sliding lever here is in the still position. As I move it to the right, we start getting some speed up, and this thing will start advancing by itself. And as we move this thing to the right even farther, it starts speeding up. And by the way, this light here indicates your slow motion is on. When you push this thing all the way to the far right, you are in just about normal speed without audio. And again, you can vary this any way you want. Uh, very slow, uh, normal speed, forward, anywhere in between. That's your slow motion. We're back in the regular play mode now. Now we can also go play in reverse as well. Now he's walking backwards here. Let's take off our, our uh, thing. He's going backwards, okay? And by the way, you don't have to keep holding these buttons down. You can just depress them once, and uh, it will go. 
Now we are going in play reverse, normal speed reverse. And again, to prove it, watch your index counter at the top of the screen. It's going backwards. All right. Back to play forward. We have another thing called fast forward. You push this, and you have to keep pushing this one, by the way. It goes, I think, about ten times or three times faster without audio. When you release it on this particular machine, you got a still frame. You're not supposed to. You're supposed to get regular uh, forward motion, but you don't. So there's our fast forward. Kind of like your double speed forward or triple speed forward in the beta and VHS systems. Now, as I said, there are two audio channels. Take them both out, you got nothing. Here's the right channel, here's the left channel, and here are both channels. And as I said, movies that are current or are a couple years old, if they're released on Laserdisc, they are probably released in CX encoded stereo, which is very, very clean uh, sounding stereo. Now, here's something that I kind of uh, liken to beta scan. This is picture search. This really rips through the, picture, through the disc really fast. Matter of fact, it's so fast they've cut out the last two digits on the uh, index counter. As you can see, you only have three numbers now, the first three. This really moves. Uh, again, you can go forward like I'm going here, or you can go backwards like I'm going here now. Now again, this does not harm the record, scratch it, anything like that. Uh, because this is read by a laser, there's no contact with a needle at all. There's no harm done to the disc. So that basically is how the effects work on this particular machine. Now there have been some newer models come out, as I mentioned earlier, since 1980 or so when Pioneer took over the laser vision video disc system and the Pioneer machines I'm told are far superior to this old ancient Magnavox. Okay, so that was a quick demo of the video disc system, how it looks from the machine and how the special effects look. A couple more points. When these video discs first came out in 1979 or so, they came in these real nice, almost cardboard type packages, kind of like the one that you're seeing here. And the discs themselves were packages in almost a kind of felt, felt jacket like this. And they were kind of durable, real, real nice. Well, when Pioneer took the system over in about 1980 or 81 or so, they went the American way, the way of economy. And they changed a couple things. For one thing, these first discs that came out from Magnavox, which were then a course called uh, MCA Disco Vision Disc, ran about 28 minutes per side or so, almost half an hour. This was called the CAV format, otherwise known as Constant Angular Velocity. And this had a terrific video picture. The one you saw here tonight was in this mode. Uh, in about 80 or 81, again when Pioneer took over the whole system, they went the way of economy and decided, why should we spend the money for two discs for one movie when we can go the other format, the CLV extended play format, and get one movie per disc. So they did that. They went down to 58 minutes per side, and they put a movie on one disc. This is CLV format, otherwise known as constant linear velocity or extended play. Now all these players, even this old Magnavox here, can accommodate both the CAV or the CLV type of discs. All discs today, with a very, very, very few exceptions, are in the CLV or extended play mode about one hour per side. Interesting thing is too that when they did change to this new CLV format the video quality went down a little bit. I can see it and a lot of my friends can see the difference as well. The picture just is not quite as sharp and the colors aren't quite as vivid as they were in the CAV or 30 minute per side discs. The packaging went down too. Instead of these real nice felt jackets they went to a very thin almost cellophane type of jacket. These heavy cardboard boxes were replaced by real, real thin cardboard liners or jackets, almost like the kind that carry record albums today. So, there you go. In any event, the quality of these discs is still far superior than any beta or VHS or any type of half-inch tape can provide. Now, what you saw here on my TV screen, you can't really appreciate as far as quality, because what you're watching is a picture taken by my video camera of my TV set, okay? You're not here in this room next to me to be able to really see this disc being played on this TV set. Now, if you were to go to a video store and rent a video disc of a movie, rent a beta or VHS tape of the same movie, came home and put each tape or disc inside this respective machine and played them back on two TV sets side by side, two identical sets, there would be a huge difference in quality, especially the video quality. Now the audio quality is also good on these things.